Good evening and welcome to Night Prayer with Mansfield Chapel. Um, it's a very special night prayer for us. For many people, it's been a long time waiting to hear that organ be played. Um, and so we're very thankful to be hearing our newly restored organ played in all its glory and especially to have it played by John Oxlade, who was the director of music at Mansfield for many years. We'll take a moment later in this evening's service for a prayer of thanksgiving for this gift. We begin our service in the words, Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. By day, O oh God, you grant your steadfast love, and at night your song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. And now the choir will sing that will lead us in our hymn, All Are Welcome, and you'll find the words on the screen. <laughs>
Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. We come together this evening to celebrate the gift of hospitality, but we also come together to give thanks for this organ restored so that we may make a joyful noise to the Lord. Lord God, we, your people, joyously gather together, join our voices to the universal hymn of praise that our song may rise to you. We give thanks for the gift of this restored organ. Bless the musicians that will play it, the workers that crafted it, and the hearts that treasured it. Grant that its music may lead us to express our prayer and praise to you in all your glory. Amen. And now we will hear the choir sing Jubilate Deo. Reading comes from Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people 
one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they, will, then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as we mentioned earlier, this evening's service theme is about the gift of hospitality. This is part of our series this term about sanctuary. So in thinking of talking about hospitality, who better to talk to than Nick, our front of house manager at Mansfield. So he's kindly agreed to sit in and have a, a little conversation, a short interview with me about hospitality. And we start with the question of what does hospitality mean to you, Nick, and why is it so important? Uh, what it means to me, quite simply, I think, is a sort of need um, to nurture, the desire to make people happy. Um, on a deeper level, I think that simple act in itself uh, brings happiness to me, just as um, uh, I am making other people happy, hopefully. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, imagine, uh, you know, you sometimes get more joy giving the right present to the right person than the person receiving it. So that's um, what I think hospitality is. It's, the generosity of nature, it's the surprise gift um, you receive as a traveler, as a young man backpacking, I was always often, you know, happily surprised by um, strangers who, you know, gave me, literally gave me shelter for no money, you know, that sort of um, uh, selfless act, which can never be repaid really, but um, the person doing it doesn't actually want payment, um, which m perhaps leads on to your next question. Yes, yeah, so the, the interesting point about the, the selflessness nature of it. So that leads into how is hospitality done when it's done well? What does that look like? Yeah, uh, so perhaps how is it done badly? And um, we've sort of lost our way a little bit with the commercialization of hospitality uh, because the minute you bring money into it, uh, there's this perhaps unrealistic expectation or some people can have the wrong expectations and which are then not met and that leads to a sort of unhappiness and, and a clash um, 
clash of wills. Um, how is it done well? Um, yeah, when both parties are come at it from from the right angle. So simply um, the person arriving is prepared to receive joy and um, the host is prepared to, to give it. Um, yeah, so I, th I think the transaction is is best when it when it isn't financial. Hmm. And how how does your faith um, form or inform your work in hospitality? Uh, I think when it's done well, um, the act of doing hospitality well is is a spiritual act um, and possibly a religious one. I mean, I can, I'll give you an example. When I used to work in, in the safari lodge industry, we, we did an exercise um, once a week around the fire at the end of the evening uh, where men were asked to swap their wives um, just for a, a short while. <laughs> Um, but then we uh, washed each other's feet. So rather than, you know, s simply washing somebody's feet, the, the wives were then washing the feet of a stranger. Um, and then you do it again with the men washing the, uh, the women's feet. So everybody experiences what it's like for, um, to A, wash feet, and B, have them washed by somebody you don't know. Um, and that actually is is such a sort of joyous um, event <laughs> uh, and and does have um, religious connotations uh, um, not just in the Bible but you know that act of welcoming strangers and and washing their feet goes back um, centuries uh, it, it's a historic as well as a religious act um, but Giving bread, I mean, you know, taking communion um, is, is, it's not just about the person receiving communion, it's about the person giving it. Um, so, so there are always two people involved. Um, so um, absolutely, and okay, the bread we take at communion is the body of Christ, but um, for me as somebody who makes bread, uh, I enjoy making it just as much as I enjoy um, I enjoy other people eating my bread more than <laughs> me eating it. Um, so it's it's certainly spiritual on on many levels, and um, I think it's you don't have to be a Christian to be good at hospitality or want to be kind to other people, but. Um, I mean, I don't think being a Christian ever informed my decision to take a career in hospitality, but the two certainly go hand in hand. Yeah. And I, I appreciate you making that point about uh, there has to be two people involved with hospitality. It's, it's something we don't do on our own um, in yeah. a room by ourselves. It, it, it involves the other. And that's something that you do very well. And that I think Mansfield as a college you. does very well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you, you have to sort of, you know, somehow love everybody who comes through the door. Um, um, whether that's a Christian virtue or, I, I think to be good at hospitality and stay in it for a long time, you, yeah, you have to strip yourself of your expectations. You can't judge anybody who comes in just as um, if we go back to sort of Old Testament terms of hospitality, you know, it doesn't matter who's knocking on the door in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the night. You, you open the door and, and give them what you have. And mm -hmm. certainly I've experienced that you know, traveling um, throughout often, you know, the poorest places in the world are the, and the poorest people you visit are the, are the people who give you the most. 
Mm. And again, as I say earlier, you can never really repay that except you, you, you repay it by passing it on, by paying it forward. You, you're kind to the next person that asks you for help. Well, thank you so much, Nick, for sharing your experience and expertise. Oh, well, you're very welcome. It's nice to be called an expert. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, thank you very much. And it's a, a great way to really learn and live out that gospel reading that you read for us as well. So thank you. Thank you very yeah, much. No, thank you for asking me. Pleasure. And now we will get to hear the wonderful organ again for a period of reflection. Let us pray. Give us eyes to see the deepest needs of people. Give us hearts full of love for our neighbours as well as for the strangers we meet. Help us understand what it means to love others as we love ourselves. Teach us to care in a way that strengthens those who are sick. Fill us with generosity so we feed the hungry, clothe the naked and give drink to the thirsty. Let us be a healing balm to those who are weak and lonely and weary by offering our kindness to them. May we remember to listen, to smile, to offer a helping hand 
each time the opportunity presents itself. Give us hearts of courage that we will be brave enough to risk loving our enemy. Inspire us to go out of our way to include those at the margins. Help us to be welcoming and inclusive to all who come to our door. Let us be God's hospitality in the world. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Thank you to the choir for leading us in song. Thank you to Joseph and Annabelle. A very big thank you to John Oxlade for providing us with that great music and letting us hear that wonderfully restored organ again. Thank you to Stephen for leading the prayers and thank you very much, Nick, for reading and for being in conversation with me this evening. We hope to see you next week when I believe Tony will be leading um, our preaching for Ascension Day, which we are looking forward to, and to hearing the wonderful organ and the wonderful choir yet again. It's a real gift this term to have those qualities back into our worship. So thank you all. And now we end with the blessing. May all be welcomed here friend and stranger from near and far. May all be blessed and honored as they enter. And each day, every day, each going out and each returning, the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Mm -hmm.